Hello and welcome to Tech for Non-Techies, the only podcast that demystifies the fast-growing technology sector. I'm your host, Sophia Madriega, Chicago Beef MBA and tech entrepreneur. My aim here is to give you the skills, knowledge and confidence to find opportunities in the tech sector, whether that's through founding a company, getting a dream job or bringing a fresh perspective to your work. Hello, smart people. How are you today? I've been playing a lot of tennis in Hyde Park lately, and it is so beautiful. The autumn colours in London are just stunning. But you know me, I haven't just been healthy and studious because that will be fucking boring. This weekend, I partied at Lalo, and that's a club in Notting Hill in West London. And let me tell you, it was full of really hot people. So if you're into eye candy... Get yourself over to Lalo and enjoy the talent. Speaking of talent, today we're going to learn how you can use your ample talents to break into a career in tech. By the way, did you like that segue from hot people into tech? I thought it was bloody brilliant. Anyway, today we will hear from Alexandra Soroka, who started her career in investment banking and is now kicking ass in fintech as the head of direct sales at Visa in Europe. And I know that a lot of you smart people, you started your careers in traditional industries like banking or consulting or big marketing businesses, and you might feel like you missed the tech bus. If this sounds like you, don't worry, I got you. If you're wondering how to transition into a career in tech out of a traditional business, then listen up. This episode is for you. Hello, Alexandra, and welcome to Tech on Techies. I'm really excited to hear about your career transition today so our audience could learn from it too. So first things first, tell us what is it that you do in your job today? Hi, Sophie, and thank you for having me, having me here. Uh, okay, so today I'm working for Visa in Europe, uh, and I'm covering uh, and I'm leading the business development team that works with retail. So what does it mean? That means we work on innovative projects with retailers around payments, around loyalty, around mobile payments to make their customers more happy. So since this is tech for non-techies, I'm just, I just really want to understand kind of what is the technology aspect of it? And the reason why I'm asking is that, you know, everybody knows that Visa is a company, Visa exists, it's a massive company, but I think most people don't think of it as a fintech company. So could you explain like what are the tech aspects in what you do and how that fits into Visa as a whole? Well, I would say that uh, how we position Visa is a network of people working for everyone. That means we have a fuel of commerce. Yes, we just had a rebranding of a mission and rebranding from a different perspective, from the brand perspective and from a mission perspective. And I think it's a very good statement because it it positioned the company uh, in a B2B solutions and a B2C solutions. So for the consumer retail and for uh, business to business payments. Uh, So what does it mean for, um, let's say, from a tech perspective? Visa brings very different assets. So we bring technology. Uh, that fuel the payments, which can be like fundamental technology, like a a network processing or APIs. So different developers can connect and use our data or our services. We do bring a lot of sponsorship assets, meaning we are sponsors of Olympics. So it provides experience to consumers uh, and different uh, value also for merchants. Uh, We bring consulting and data analytics services as well. So all of this being said, we bring a huge stack of technology and innovations. We also bring like marketing assets, and we also bring consulting. So this is how work, Visa works today. We ourselves as a technology company, and we do create, and we do have a network of partners of different kind of fintechs uh, that we bring on board to support uh, the development of the business of our clients. Interesting. So actually, for the audience, if you don't know what an API is, there is a podcast episode that came out, I think, in February this year called APIs, Why... Uber uses Google Maps. So just go and listen to that. It's an important concept. Um, But essentially, right now, you are working with merchants. So you're working with, you know, companies that have shops. Is that right? And you are essentially helping them to process payments, make more money. Is that right? Well, for us, merchants, everybody who accepts 
the visa card. So that will be a shop, it will be the airline, it will be the hotel, it will be anybody who accepts the card. It can be financial service as well. So, well, if I go to the explaining the visa business model, we are like a fuel, really like the fundamental technology. Then we have clients, meaning banks who either issue cards or accept cards. And so we are enablers. So we work with this level of clients and then they provide services to consumers and to merchants. So we have a kind of uh, like network model. Uh, We have a network model and an enablers model, business model. So basically to do your job, you need to understand the basics of technology, like what on earth is an API, what's a backend, what's a front and all of that fun stuff. You also need to have an understanding of marketing and an understanding of finance because you're working with that? Yes, uh, um, all of them actually. And this is why, and this is where I think this experience at Visa is bring together all the experiences that I have from since the beginning of my career, because I had a path in investment banking and uh, in private equity where I was doing business modeling and understanding like a lot of financial analytic, analytics. I was running some part of the business in marketing or very marketing experience I used to have at Groupon because it's a pretty marketing company. Uh, and yes, you need to understand technology. Like you don't need to be engineer to do what I want, to do, sorry, to do what I do, but you need to have a willingness to understand what is beneath the surface. And I think this is the main thing which makes you a, success, a successful player in a technical field that at the end of the day, when you look around, there's a consumer services on the surface, on interface level, okay? And then you, you need to understand what is the Lego be- beneath. So what is the building blocks which need to be brought together to actually make it work? API is a part of it. Platforms is another part of it. And, and so you need to kind of understand what types of building blocks are required to make this consumer experience. You don't need to know technical specs at all. But when you... So, and my job would be, I understand the challenge or the strategy of my client and then I say, okay, this is will be brought from Visa across the journey. This might be needed from another fintech or another type of provider. So I need to kind of understand what types of blocks are required for his uh, challenge or his uh, strategic like objective to be addressed. Well, that's and, interesting because that's basically what I always say is that, um, you know, the ambitious, smart people who listen to me I know that you guys, listeners, you have this tendency to just want to learn absolutely everything and that is impossible and useless. So don't do it. So what you need to do is you need to be able to understand how to translate business strategy into a technology strategy. Because like the whole point of having technology is for us to do something. You know, a hammer is only useful if you need to, I don't know, um, hang up a painting or something. It's not useful in itself. Understanding the building blocks so you can help clients achieve their aims, like that's that's basically enough. So I want to go back to what you said. You said you started your career in investment banking and then you worked in Groupon and now you're at Visa and then there was a bit of private equity. So uh, let's go back because, again, a lot of my listeners... They are, you know, a few of them are working in finance and now want to transition into tech. And I think they would love to understand how you did it. So you come out of university, you start working at, was it JP Morgan? Yes, yes. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty classical at the time uh, to, to, to do the financial university and after starting investment banking. So, and like, t- to make the short answer to, to, you, to your question, I had a plan and I had a dream. The, the path is absolutely not where it was at the beginning in my plans, but actually this kind of uh, ideas of what I want helped me to navigate and make choices. But I completely not where I thought I would be in 20 years ago. So yes, I wanted... What was the plan? <laughs> yes, I, was, I started actually as a financial analyst uh, and uh, financial analyst, risk analyst, actually, uh, uh, to say correctly. And I wanted to kind of pursue, I thought that it would be very helpful to make additional international degrees. So I, uh, I went to France to get my first master's in corporate finance. And so just to interrupt, you were working in JP Morgan in Moscow and then yeah. you decided to get another master's. And so you went to France to get a master's in finance. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. And then I returned back because at the early 2000s, like the Russian market was quite, quite significantly and, and fast growing. Uh, so I wanted to return back. And, and this was purely occasion, I would say, that I ended up in a technology company. 
It was not planned. Yes, it was not planned. It was just paid, well paid. So oh, okay. I said, so yeah, 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 yeah. So to be fair, to be fair. So that's why I'm saying there's planning and there's choices. Yeah, so it was uh, quite well paid at that time. And I was ended up in financial analyst, but in Cisco systems. So I came in technology. Okay, so JP Morgan, then Cisco. Cool. Yes, yes. And it was a kind of financial analyst transition path. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, I actually, I didn't very much liked it. I would say it was like all those kind of servers and booters and like firewalls and Absolutely, I couldn't understand. I was like, <laughs> sad to, where's my financial business? Yeah. But, but I end up to stay on different, like, local companies you would not know, uh, with this, what is called, like, tech, but box moving business, meaning a certain hardware, which has additional software. So I was between hardware and software uh, sales for next, I think, about eight years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at, at, at certain time, I would say, okay, I still had my dream. I had my kind of investment banking dream, which I or private equity at the direction. Where is my finance? Why do I do all that? I said, no, I need so to wait, kind of. The dream was to like be a partner in a private equity firm and just buy everything in the world. world. Yeah, yeah, look, well, it was maybe not. <laughs> no good money in champagne. It's exactly, like exactly. It. So I was actually, I was, I would say no, like I, I still so much interested to go back to investments. And it was, I think, a kind of unfulfilled dream at that time. Mm-hmm. And so um, I had a chance to join uh, a team of my classmates who founded uh, uh, an, an investment boutique at the time, uh, completely changing what I was doing. So I was living in the corporate world, uh, international company. I said, no, I mean, I, I really need to try my dream because, I mean, and it was a good occasion. And so that's why I went to it. And it was super forming experience for me because it was a small business. We were kind of uh, let's say, uh, co-founders uh, in all that story. Uh, and then I started to... You founders of a private equity fund. I was, I was the, the guys, my, my classmates were, were, were founding this company and I, and I brought in like, I was not personally co-founder, but like as a team member of the yeah, core team member. Company. Yeah, yeah, core team member. Uh, and then I started to develop the business in different tech areas. Mm-hmm. And it was like, mm, how many years? More than 10 years. Yeah, about 10, 11 years ago. Uh, and so there was not even venture industry in Russia formed at that time. So mm-hmm. I was digging every piece of technology which we had to, to start working on fundraising, to start working on private equity projects. And I started to address a lot of e-commerce. Uh, and this is where my very important transition was. And that's why I thought it's okay doing the private equity. It's super forming to make your next choice. You mean, so I was addressing to, to understanding new industries. So mm-hmm. it was super helpful. So I spent I spent about two and a half years there, and I actually understood I'm rather like corporate person. So I, I thought, okay, I, I think I will pursue still my corporate career, uh, but at that time I could address like tech, retail, clean energy, e-commerce. So a, like a bit, hardware, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I addressed about five or six absolutely different industries, and then I say, hey guys, e-commerce is kind of growing. Uh, maybe it's the right way and right direction to look at. And it was like 2012, I think. Yeah. Uh, and this is how I transitioned to, to Groupon. Okay. And Groupon at the time, I, I remember Groupon at the time was just exploding. Like yeah. that was the, that was the e-commerce the story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was the e-commerce story. So that's why I went there. And it was right. like. Just to understand, because I really want listeners to learn. Yeah. Essentially, you saw a business trend. You saw that like e-commerce yes. is growing and. And you thought, okay, well, let me go and leave this finance thing that I'm doing to get into e-commerce because that seems to be uh, the industry that's growing now. Absolutely. And I just felt myself like more as a big corporate person. So that's why I say, okay, I see the trend and this is like, let's try the trend. And I think this is a very important learning to everybody who transition. It's like have an ambition, have a goal and build on your strength. So Mm -hmm. I knew part of the tech, but not e-commerce at all, I would say. Uh, but I was making the transition through my uh, sales experience. So mm-hmm. I came to, to lead the sales team there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was that meaning I had a bridge. I had a bridge to how to transfer, how to enter technology. But then it was like a pretty harsh learning curve uh, because not only it's a very fast and very speedy business model when you need to mm-hmm. make a fast sale. So it's a large team that you need to manage. But also that was a super learning of what is backend, what is a front end, what is a digital marketing, what is SMM, SMM, SMM marketing. 
So it was learning at the same time of like basically the, of the platform business, first of all. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you'd never worked in a platform business? Absolutely. No, not at all. I was, I was working in a pure, like, this is my product. I sell the product to my clients. Okay. And you were also just because I, you know, I know some of your wonderful group on colleagues. So you're working directly with the chief technology officer, um, which you'd never done before. Uh, I mean, I know that chief technology officer. He is he's quite strict, um, but also he has been coding since I think he was twelve or something. So speaking, you know, speaking to somebody like that who, for whom the language of tech is just so natural. It must have been really hard when you literally don't understand the words that he's using. Uh, and this is, yes, you're right. But this is how I went to many learnings, which I had in tech, is just talk to people, talk and ask questions permanently. Because, well, I cannot say about now, I can do have a real book to read one book and to understand tech for a non-tech person. This is why your business exists, because there is not so easy way to go there and read and take a book. Uh, so at that time, absolutely, but there was no such an option. So talk to people, ask questions. This is the main thing you can, and people like to tell and to explain you. And, and I, I always had amazing people across my career and it, it can be like your manager. It can be your, uh, your team member. It can be, I was always, I think I was always still, um, how to say, uh, very keen to deal with tech. Maybe for another reason, I grew up in a family of physicists. So, so that's why the, the technology per se was kind of very natural to me. So I was very, I was immediately coming to the new business and, and like saying hello and getting to know the CTO head of service or somebody who's related to tech because I was fascinated to understand it even I was, when I was doing the sales business and sales role. And I think this is curiosity and talking to people asking questions was something who formed me. It's not a specific education related to tech because I had a financial degree, a number of them. So this is the this curiosity. And when you're curious, people like it. It's a bit like, you know, when you go to a foreign country and like maybe you just learned the language for like three months. So you only have very beginner's level. But if you go to a cafe and you order, you know, when I'm in Italy, like my Italian is not great, but, you know, Italians are lovely, warm people. And then, you know, you order a glass of wine in Italian and then everybody's so happy and then they just like you more. And then they like, just the fact that you're showing curiosity and willingness means that actually people are much more willing to help you. Which yeah, and this is this is this is absolutely true. And I can tell you, without having people on board, it and it, I did I do it. I would say natural. I'm just natural curious. But at the end of the day, it's super helpful because in your in the tech companies like where I'm working right now, you permanently have questions which are beyond the specific product or beyond the specific field. So you need to learn how to make bridges between different things and this is where you need to have kind of good connections to come and ask questions and ask for experience and this is where people share and you kind of accumulate the knowledge this is how i approach it i I cannot say it's like it's not a a scientific way of doing that but it was always helping me uh the willingness to understand and and tech guys quite often they're, they're happy to share because not everybody comes to to ask how things works yeah, because uh, everybody's too scared. Maybe, may, maybe, but at the end of the day, this this opening discussion always is is, is super helpful. It's super helpful. So I want to understand the next step. So basically, you're working at Groupon, and this is when you're learning how to speak tech for the first time. Um, and by the way, there is a how uh, how to speak tech for leaders course on the Tech Not Techies website. So if that's what you're interested in, go check that out. But essentially. Alexandra, you are working at Groupon, you're learning all of these concepts, you're working with the CTO, and then you decide to go and do something else. So can you tell us about about that next step? And why did you do it? Because you'd already transitioned into this really fast-growing e-commerce sector. So why did what happened? I, I think that the that's all was a little bit related to the company and to the cycle. So as you you correctly said, like about 2011 and 12, this is where uh, Groupon was like going on a peak. Uh, and I would say there are several factors. First, the, the development was not so good anymore uh, and not such a high growth. It's a super stressful business model, super stressful. So you have it in a daily sale. So you check things 7 a.m. in the morning and you finish by 12 p.m. in the evening to check that your page is okay uh, to go out. So it's pretty engaging. And, and it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's also was another piece where I say, okay, 
that's a bit uh, maybe it was a bit uh, a bit too much. I understood um, I understood during that year which I spent there first. I need to continue growing. And this is at the same period I applied for Chicago Booth and I went into that direction. And at the same time, I was saying, hey, I think I need to transition to um, not maybe not at all most stable industry, but to a different, maybe more established company. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this was a second, second thing. And here I wanted to share with you one, one of my process, which helped me tremendously at that time, is I was saying, hey, uh, Opportunities were coming to me and even Groupon, it was matching like opportunity was coming because I was thinking of e-commerce, but it was not like this is the criteria to where I want to go. And when I was at this Groupon, I was saying, hey, I need to be like more specific is what I want exactly. And I had a little list for myself, uh, which was super, super helpful. And I, I go back to that at just six points. Uh, and I wrote to myself somewhere back in 2013 saying, okay, what do I want? I want a brand which is a market leader. I want a growing tech market. I want a position which like, kind of a good status, so kind of leadership position. I have a relatively um, balanced uh, daily agenda, so the daily schedule. Uh, I want a high income, and I want it to be an international company. Wow, so easy. So this was a six-point little little list. So I, wrote my, I want all and everything now. So this was a kind of list. This is so useful because I just I, I just want to stop there and. Um, I really want to first of all praise you for actually having, you know, sat down and thought about this. And yeah, it's an ambitious list, but A, you actually got all the things. Uh, but B, I think uh, a lot of people don't like take that time and sit down and think, okay, well, what is my list? Where where am I going? Because and you know, if you don't know where you if you don't know where you want to go, you're not gonna get there. And so I just want to understand like how did you come up with this list? Like, what was the process? Because you are saying it now, and it's so neat, but I'm assuming the process to... to yeah, I was, I was reflecting. I, uh, yes, and I spent quite a bit of time of actually understanding what matters to me, mm -hmm. uh, which factors matters to me. And, for example, I don't, okay, I put the income, but income is number four, so it makes sense. But there are other factors, for example, which matters to me, international, uh, international company or growing market, technology business. Uh, and so I was combining things together based on my values, based on different experience, which I had. And at the time I was saying, yes, it's a very ambitious, but at least I think what I need, because if we don't, life just happened to us. Exactly. And, and this was my learning from my first like uh, three companies or whatever, four companies till then before that, which, which I was working in. Things were a little bit happening to me. Yeah. So if we, if we don't have a certain vision, uh, life, life just happens to us. And this was my uh, a thoughtful reflection of a previous first year, 10 year of my career, uh, when I was choosing not the things which I was not kind of planning, but what was more important. For example, the Cisco was a big learning for me, that at that time I was so much into the kind of financial career and I actually choosing money. So I'm not saying I'm regret of that. It's a different thing. Actually, this step helped me to transition to tech at the end of the day. So it's not about regretting how things happen. It's about or oh, maybe I would think differently to first understand and stick to my plan and certain things. Yes, keeping the flexibility, but really keeping your priorities. And so that's why I was taking quite a bunch of time and months to say, okay, what are my priorities? And this is how I came up with this list. And this is what helped me actually to uh, select Visa uh, and, and get the role uh, because it was bringing me all the things which I wanted together. Um, yeah, so that's, Interesting. And so you basically then started working at Visa. And then obviously the most important thing in your life happened because you went to Chicago booth and you met me. And life has never been the same. Um, I can see that you're laughing, but it's true. So for everybody, uh, Alexandra and I were actually classmates at business school and uh, can blackmail each other about many stories. But uh, <laughs> Instead of doing that, let's talk about your career. So basically, you were at Chicago Booth, uh, you were doing the executive MBA with me, and then you were also working at Visa, and you moved over from Paris. Uh, you moved over from Moscow to Paris, which was kind of a long-term ambition. What would you advise to somebody who is 
working in a traditional business, whether it's consulting or whether it's banking or, you know, maybe they're in a marketing agency, but essentially they want to transition into a career in tech because like you, they see that the tech sector is booming, but they don't know much beyond that. You know, they don't know if they want to do e-commerce, they don't know if they want to get into digital marketing. They just know that tech is a thing. I want to be part of it. What do I do? What would you say to that person? First, you need to eat the elephant by pieces. So when you, th- <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you, when you think it that way, it's big and shiny, uh, it's scarce. So you need to decompose this thing into different blocks so you can swallow actually them. Uh, and, and so then you say, okay, it's shiny, but what exactly? And this is my list. So you need to know yourself well enough why like, it makes sense to me. How does it respond to what matters for me? Uh, as a person, because at the end of the day, our work is a representation of who we are to make us happy mm-hmm. uh, and to perform well, actually. So b- both, so it's mutually fulfilling. And then you say, okay, this is, I understand why it works. Then what do I have, like where I want to be, okay? Mm-hmm. What does it mean? And then you can go into, to read into on LinkedIn, what does it mean, the experience of people who are in the role which are shiny to you? Mm-hmm. And then you can look at yourself, okay, this is me. And then, like, look at this bridge, what can bring you there? You will have maybe 10, 20, whatever percent of what you need to have. And then you need to think of a path. It might not be in one step, by the way. It might be in a couple of steps. Usually, yeah, it's usually not one step. <laughs> exactly. It's not a couple. So, so, And then you maybe need exactly, as you were saying, you were working in an accounting company, but you moved to doing accounting in a different company already, which is tech. So you, I cannot suggest specific paths. What is important is to understand my strength. What are my strengths? What is my kind of strength in your train or your airplane, which can help you flying from where you are to the tech? And then you say, what do I need to do, experience, and to know, to fill the gap? And it's importantly not know, but experience. And so then you say, okay, I need to, to, to get the Sophia course. And after Sophia course, I at least understand what other five books I need to read. This is one thing. It's about knowing. Then about experiencing, where can I expose myself so to something which is connecting me? And then it can be absolutely different. It can be in, I don't know, associations, in sports. Maybe you go to a running club, somebody which was doing tech there. You don't know. So the extracurricular activities, which creates your sandbox, obviously not whatever, like mm-hmm. not yeah. so you something which not- relates, it can be, again, like, Finding a not additional job, so experience, which can you connect to the people who are in tech. First, to test, do you really want it? Or is it just shiny because somebody talks about, everybody talks about that. This is a very important test to make. And also, how can I get and talk to the people to actually help myself decompose? What does it mean to come there? Because we all have illusions before we connect to the people from the field. Mm-hmm. And it's the good story is about Groupon. You think you come to e-commerce, but it's pretty hardcore, just direct sales machine. And, and we were all laughing about that at Groupon at the time. Everybody thinks you come to e-commerce. No, yeah, the real daily job, it's like uh, in many teams, it's actually completely different. So there's a lot of illusions before you come to where you are. So that's why, why you need to con- connect to people who can help you understanding what you actually, what does it really mean mm-hmm. and what I should do. So I would say this is the most important break. To sum up, Alexandra says, learn how to speak tech so you have a common language to help you break into the lucrative tech industry, but then combine that knowledge with taking action to help build on your unique experience and your talent. And my darling smart person, this is exactly what I help smart people like you do in my program called How to Break into a Career in Tech you will get access to the course I teach on the core concepts of technology. And I've taught that content at London Business School and Oxford and more, so it's pretty damn good. You'll also get access to our membership, which I've often talked about here. But here's the fun part. We will also work together one-on-one to take your career transition from aspiration to action. Wouldn't it be great if in three months' time you could add a new position to your LinkedIn? Wouldn't it be awesome to start becoming an insider rather than looking in and not knowing how to even get started? If this intrigues you, then fill out the application form in the show notes. It's just a few questions about where you are and what you want. 
If I think that the program can help you, you will get an invitation to a free consultation call with me and we'll run through how we could work together to help you reach your aims while also enjoying yourself in the process because life is for living. To apply, go to techfonontakis.co forward slash application. That's techfonontakis.co forward slash application or just go to the link in the show notes. And by the way, If you learned something new today, tell me. I'd love to know because, you know, I love you. Open your podcast app right now and leave a rating and a review. That would make me super happy. And on that note, thanks for listening. And I'll be back in your lovely ears next week. Ciao.